Jays, I'm Abby Olson, and welcome to The Pulse. Every episode, we highlight news, sports, and student voices at Bondurant for our middle school. This year, the middle school has implemented some stricter policies for students. Landon Morrow has more on that story. Students returning to Bondurant Farm Middle School this year may notice new rules being enforced. One of the rules involves headphones. Students must have wired headphones and can no longer use wireless or Bluetooth headphones because too many students were connecting to their cell phones last year. Here's an interview with Mr. Klein on the Chromebook restrictions. This school year, we are trying something different with our Chromebook. And why we have restrictions on them is because the Chromebook is a tool for learning and we wanna make learning a priority. Therefore, to get off of the restricted list, we want all students to demonstrate that they are doing the best that they can in every class. So at the end of four and a half weeks for seventh and eighth grade students, getting all C minus or better grades is your goal. All sixth grade students getting those, those same grades by the end of the first quarter is important for you to get off of the restricted list. Two other new rules. Water bottles must be clear and only contain water. And one you certainly have noticed, all students started the year with restricted internet and must earn their way out of the restricted group with C minuses and above. This is Landon Marr reporting for The Polls. Bonnerant Farrar is growing rapidly and is constantly making changes to accommodate all of our new students. Casey Van Landingham checked in on some of the updates. By now, you've probably noticed how crowded the halls are compared to last year. This is due to our district's extreme growth, and it doesn't seem like it'll slow down anytime soon. To brace for the amount of students coming in this year, there were some changes to the schedule. There are now four lunches compared to the three last year, and instead of eight periods, there are now nine. Along with these schedule changes, there have been some classroom modifications as well. What used to be the STEM room has now been split into science and resource rooms. The STEM room is now room 143, which was once the old board working room. I talked to Mr. Kramer about some of the classroom changes that will be happening this year. Some of the changes that will be happening uh, even during this year is we will start some internal construction in the building. We will eventually transform the wrestling room into a temporary classroom and choir room. The current choir room and classroom will be transformed into a temporary band room and the auditorium will start being remodeled into a uh, new uh, band and choir room and then we'll move other things around after that. So we have a lot of things happening even now to, tra to start working towards student growth, and we have a lot more plans uh, coming out for long-term uh, in the near future from the district level. There have been and will be plenty of changes to the school, but one of the most exciting is the new seven and eight building that will be built in a few years. The district's growth will be affecting many aspects of our schools. I guess we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. This has been Casey Van Landingham reporting for The Pulse. Eighth grade football had a home game versus Gilbert on Tuesday, September 17th. Andrew Tweedell has highlights. On Tuesday, the eighth grade football team tamed the Gilbert Tigers on a very hot and humid evening. On their first possession, Zach Solers found Nick Fonz for a long pass completion. That play set up a score from running back Titus Crane. Later, running back Dawson Ayler scored on a toss of nearly 50 yards. Other Jays made nice plays, including this quarterback keep by Sack Soldier. Nick Fonz also got in on the scoring that helped bury the Tigers. Drew Pelt shared some thoughts. I thought we did really good as a team, offense and defensive wise. We need to uh, get better at tackling a little bit more, and so that's what we're going to work on in practice. And I thought everybody did their part. This is Andrew Tweedell signing out for The Pulse. Eighth grade volleyball battle North Polk on Thursday, September 12th. Colton Sidoris brings you more. Last Thursday, September 12th, the eighth grade Lady Jays battled it out against North Polk in a volleyball match. 
Here, the Lady Jays make a sliding save that leads to a score. Here, Grace Berenson makes a nice spike that leads to Blue Jay points. Here, Lily Engelbrecht makes a spike that extends the Blue Jay lead. The Lady Jays force a point to mount a comeback. Here are Kyra Aker's thoughts about the game. So, we played North Polk last week, and some things we probably need to work on uh, is talking more, like communicating on who's going to call the ball and stuff. And we lost those games, but if we work on talking more and moving towards the ball more, I think this week, tomorrow, we will beat Boone. This has been Corton Sidoris reporting for The Pulse. Tessa Sutherland is unhappy with the recent teenager trend. Here she is with some thoughts. Hello, my name is Tessa S -S -S Sutherland, and today I'm raging on the pulse about my hate for Visco girls, and that really gets my heart pumping. This trend is so overused. S -S 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 this and I of that. First of all, let's talk about this basic Visco girl fashion. Visco girls are always wearing scrunchies. Like, why not just use a hair tie? Most of the time, you can't even tell they're wearing pants. They're always swinging around their hydro flask, and then they drop and say, and I oops, x, x. that is so overused and so annoying. I'm glad you can't have them at school anymore. Second of all, they talk about saving the turtles, but what are they saving? A few plastic cups at Starbucks? I'm sorry, but a few groups of basic girls is not going to help save the turtles. I hate to break it to you, ladies and gents, but everyone still uses plastic. And lastly, the Bisco Girl comments and sayings. What's Anayup even mean? And tee -hee, why not just regularly laugh? What's the point of the Bisco Girl app? Isn't it just like Instagram? They're always doing basic TikToks. What's the point? Views to get famous? Basically, Bisco Girls are just so overrated and need to be canceled. This has been Tessa Southern, raging on the pulse. <laughs> I like about sixth grade, um, the that you have more freedom. Um, I like the teachers. Get most way of more them. than Anderson because there's more freedom. Well, my impression of the uh, bond rent for our middle school so far is that it's a lot bigger than I'm used to. Um, but it's a nice school, nice teachers. I like it. Cool because all the kids are nice and teachers are nice. And just. I think this school is good because you get a lot more freedom. I think this school is really good. I think it's pretty cool. Everyone's pretty sweet. Nice. Middle school is fun so far. It's a good experience. I like the middle school so far. It's been pretty good. The teachers are really it's, nice. It's really crowded during the passing time. Uh, I guess it's nice. And Except for the bell, which is really stupid and annoying. Thanks for watching The Pulse. Check us out next time for more coverage of BFMS activities and news. Don't, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at bluejaydigital.org. See ya!